here from the Enigmatic Nomadics YouTube channel where we cover van life and bus life stuff. Just about everything you could imagine from installing solar, fans, holding festivals, gatherings, crowdfunding rigs for people, catching up with people that live on the road and ask them about their rig and ask them about their lives and what compelled them to live this way. So that's what you can expect on the channel. If you would like to subscribe to see more of that, I would encourage you to do that right now. In my last video, we started with an interview of Steve, who struck out into the van life uh, about a year ago, and the video ran a little longer than I would normally want to put out an entire video, so here's the balance where we spoke in the first one about his lifestyle, and then this one, he gives us a quick tour of the rig, so let's check it out. Thank How about a tour of your van? Right on. Put up my deck furniture. Well, first of all, Let's just talk about the obvious. This is one of the coolest. I mean, I've got a, a hydraulic lift that drops down. Yeah. But it's nothing. It's not quite as big as this, and this looks way more functional and gives you a lot more floor space. Yeah. What this, was the inspiration for even doing this? When I was back, when I was reviewing the van life videos, you know, trying to figure out how I would want the van, and uh, so I was married at that time and looking at trying to put two people in here. And we go around and look at. I, I even considered buying a fully built out Class B. You know, sell the house and buy a Class B. But really, you know, none of them seemed to have enough room. So I was like, well, maybe I'll build a slide out. You know, so I started looking at the mechanisms for slide outs. They don't cost that much. And I'm like, ah, that kind of takes up a lot of space. You know, it's going to raise up the floor. And I decided, well, if I could get one with two doors, so this has a slider on both sides, maybe I'll make, make one fold out. And I didn't know if it would work or not. You know, I didn't really know how I was going to do it. I kind of bought some stuff in Oklahoma City, and I came to the van build. And it, it kind of, you know, this is... This is pretty much what I what I built there, and it's been around and gone all over. It's holding up through time. It's not getting loose and coming apart in places. The, the critical thing with, with the uh, deck was uh, getting the legs on there. I built the legs out of a piece of scaffolding um, that meant was meant to go between two uh, ladders. And I, I the first day before the van build on the weekend, I drilled out a bunch of rivets and uh, harvested all the, the individual lumber, uh, aluminum lumber and uh, drilled out the legs and just made these first fixed height legs. Kind of my dream uh, when I came up with all this, I, I didn't know at the van build if there would be anybody that had a TIG welder. Um, and then when I found that there was one person that did have a TIG welder out of all those hundreds of, of people that were camped there, uh, they were booked with jobs. Um, but on the very last day, whenever I was uh, getting the solar uh, finished up so I wouldn't get a ticket to get out of there, uh, and the deck was kind of half done, uh, they had come together and manufactured these uh, uh, the square tubes that you can see there uh, out of uh, the little gusset plates that were left over. And that allowed me to have these adjustable height legs, which really you know made all the difference in the world with the deck um, because now I can you know I can park on sloping ground, I can be on the edge of uh, reasonable cliffs and it still works pretty well. So, it's been great. Uh, the only thing I added to it from the van build is whenever I got back to Oklahoma a few months later, we fabricated some feet out of uh, uh, some steel that we pulled out of a trash pile. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, you're using a pole as a hinge? Is that a piece of electrical conduit? Uh, that is a uh, piece of uh, either one inch or inch and a quarter um, galvanized pipe. Shall we have a peek inside? Yeah, come on in. Uh, so this is my kitchen. And it kind of comes in and rolls here, and then the countertop comes in. And this is a 12-volt fridge, you know, just a Amazon cheapie. How long have you had it? Uh, oh, well, since before the van build. I came to the van build with it, so it's lasted over a year. So it's paid for itself, you know. It was a $300 refrigerator. Who it, makes it? I have no idea. I don't okay. think it's a name brand. That's my uh, pantry, and you can kind of fit some of the utilities in there some of my water tank and gray waters in there just kind of use every little bit yeah of the available space was that five gallons of water for uh, uh, washing and drinking well they're they're five gallon individual jugs i have two of those in there and a spare here so i carry 15 gallons of fresh and then i got five gallons of gray and then hey, Savannah. what's a guy go through in water by himself without a dog like about a gallon a, gallon a, day. a day if you bathe yeah okay i can i can bathe and everything in a gallon a day so i'm yeah i've been here for a week i'm in pretty good shape okay um 
And then I've got, so that doesn't count. I've got, yeah, I think, similar toilet to what you do. Okay. And uh, so my black tank and everything's separate, and it's and the water supply for it. And did you put a hen, a swivel on that chair? I did. Or was I like that from the factory. Uh, no, that this is a swivel that I bought from. Uh, I think it's a place in South Carolina. It's like EuroCampers.com or something. They have a. Um, it's like a dry plate kind of thing. It's not bearings. Okay, what's well, something like that run? Um, I believe I gave just under 300 for it. So if you pay 300 yeah. bucks for that, that means it's uh, Department of Transportation approved. Yeah, I mean it. It's a legit DOT approved um, uh, swivel for that price. I think they have some on Northern Tool for like 60 bucks, but they really? don't. They don't promise nothing. Yeah. That one's been been you know I got no complaints about it and uh, it it really it I mean when I put it in actually I put it in the same time I put this in right before I saw you last and it was like adding a room onto the van. It really does yeah. open up the van. I put one on my Astro van. Yeah, and this this lagoon table that I have here that can kind of go anywhere you know underneath the the bed and I'll I'll work there when I'm producing music or whatever. Uh, but it can also go right there in the, on this guy here and you can sit there you know work on my laptop or whatever oh nice so yeah this detaches to a bracket over there yeah we don't have to do it but yeah i'm just showing Get that bag out of the way so you can kind of see it's just comes off of that plate and goes onto that one there which is better than having a second one over there because then it would be more cluttered yeah just use it when you need it Yep, and this actually uh, supports the feet of my bed. This part uh, comes out whenever the whole bed folds down. Mm -hmm. The bed is the one thing that's still kind of janky in here that I'm working on. This is the this foam is 2.0. I just got this a few weeks ago in Phoenix. I had it custom cut. It's just regular foam, and I've got a Tempur Pedic on front or a, a, like two inches of temper material on top of it. That's the move. It works great, but it's kind of ugly. Nah. I saved. Yeah, it's not good. having these covered. Hey man, it's not even dirty yet. Wait like it's not dirty good. if you think it's ugly. Well, I saved four hundred dollars not getting these covered, uh, not getting the mattress covered, and then it's still it was a little bit thicker than I want. Obviously, yeah. I still got some work to do on this on the bed, you know, but it works. And but you're sleeping. Yeah, I I mean, when I when I came to the van build, I had a cot and a bunch of cardboard boxes. Right. So this is quite a step up from that. Is this sound deadening material? Yeah, this is like Dynamat. Um, it's called it's Dynamat. Called, well, yeah, it's a knockoff kind. I think this brand was Noiko. It's actually from Russia. Knockoff meaning it's not as good, or you think it's well, just fine? Well, it's not the name brand, but it seems about the same to me. And it's uh, the insulation and sound deadening, or just sound deadening? Well, uh, the insulation's only optical like this, you know, so it's just like your, um, uh, what's it, the... What is the stuff that everybody puts in their windows? Reflectix. Yeah, reflectix. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just like that. It's the same concept, you know, where that's a mirror. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of like you're in one of those hot pocket cookers whenever you stand in here. It does feel warmer. But if I covered it all up, it wouldn't It wouldn't be as good okay. insulation. And you've got curtains in the front you put in for a little bit of uh, privacy there, I see. You yeah, and track you, on. you recognize this track? Yeah, you recognize that track? I think that's. I, I think I got that off of one of your tours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I, it yeah. might have been uh, Mark and Giselle. Somebody had it in their bathroom that they had made a ring out of it, I think. Or it could have been Mark and Giselle. Yeah. It could have been somebody else. I don't know, but I remember they for sure had one. Yeah. Uh, it really, you know, it saw... Where I was do you get this track from? Thing. Amazon. Okay. Um, it comes with the little rollers and stuff? It does. It comes with the little, with the little rollers and the end pieces, and it, it comes wound up. It's just a flexible track that you can run around. Nice. Um, you didn't have it have a special tool to bend it? No, nah, it just bends by hand. <clears throat> uh, yeah, it works great, that stuff. Um, Talk about your solar. What are you doing for watts, and how's it performing? Yeah, so solar, uh, I've got 580 on top, which is two mismatch panels in parallel. Um, mismatch in watts, but the same voltage? Mismatch in watts, but yeah, they're pr pretty much the same. Like 41 volts? Yeah, I think they're both about 42, 41 and a half, something like that. What did pretty you close. do uh, parallel or series? They're in parallel right now. Okay. Uh, I'm, I do intend to change it, but uh, you know, right now it's working well enough where I just don't have any issues. So 580 watts on top, uh, and then that's down into a 50 amp charge controller, and um, then I've got 355 amp hour AGMs, uh, all in parallel. So it's 12, 12 volts. volts. 
12 volts and I use three because this rig is completely electric so I cook on electric I don't use any propane at all I haven't used any propane since before the, right before the last time I saw you I switched to all electric and you're getting away with it with uh, the panels that you have yeah it's even uh, in the winter time. oh uh, yeah as long as I'm not so when I went up to Maine and New Hampshire and everything in October no 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 the sun the sun's only like this high above the above right, the, right. the horizon you know it's you're always in shadows so I did put in a um, like a bat 12 volt battery charger to plug in uh, so when I'm uh, mooch docking up there you know I can at least get a couple hundred watts because uh, I was only making like five or six watts it was nothing you know in the peak of the day I needed some air, you know, because uh, you get a flat tire or whatever. So I put in a little 12 volt DC air compressor. Eventually, the plan is to hook that up to airbags. So that's what the little black tank is. It looks like uh, you've got a nice selection of DeWalt to work with. Well, it came from sticks and bricks days, and uh, I renovated the house with those tools before uh, building the van with those tools. What uh, would you say to anyone that might be watching this that, uh, like, something you learned that you wouldn't have expected when you were um, when you were first starting out? Like, a, if I could go back and, and know this going in or something that I've learned since I started this lifestyle, what advice would you give somebody? Is there any? Oh, I think I think the most important advice is you know to uh, to live the life. You know, it's it's more important. You, you're not going to understand ahead of time what it is to live like this. You know, completely. So I think at least the best thing for me was to. You can have all the ideas in the world and sketch them all down and everything, but don't actually build and spend a bunch of money till you get out and make sure that you're going to use that shower. You know, like if you. If I built all this into a shower and then I've got 15 gallons of water and I'm going to stay out here for two weeks, that math don't work. That math don't work indeed, Steve. Thank you for the interview. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Steve and I hang out. He's been really up in his game with working out and running. And I'm super proud of him. After having his motorcycle crash and going through all that pain for so many years, he's turned things around in a big way. And maybe we'll get a follow-up interview of him coming up soon. In the meantime, if you didn't watch the first video where we uh, talk about his lifestyle and what led him up to moving into a van, there's going to be a button right here that you can click for that. And to keep the party going with the really nice van tours, I'll put one up for Lee Blake, who gave me a tour a few years ago of just an amazing build, which remains on this channel to be one of the number one videos of all time. It's so impressive to see what he did with his build. So I'll put that one up there for you too. Hope you guys are enjoying your lives out there, whatever they may be, if it's in a van, a bus, or uh, however you're doing it. See you on the next upload.